Welcome to Yakushima. This subtropical paradise is located just two hours by jet foil from Kagoshima and is one of Japan's best kept secrets. Most people think that you would have to go to Okinawa to swim with turtles or go snorkeling in coral reefs, but you can do them right here on this island. In fact, 40% of the loggerhead turtle population is born on one beach in Yakushima. You can see them lay their eggs and hatch out of the sand if you're lucky. You can explore tide pools like I am now. You can go on one of Japan's best hikes and see the Jomonsugi, a giant cedar tree that is said to be between two and 7,000 years old and is 10 men around. It is absolutely massive. There's just so much to see and do here on Yakushima. So I've only got a few days here. I'm gonna be camping around here uh, near this coral reef. Um, hopefully I'm gonna see as much as possible and let's get started. Yakushima is the southernmost part of Japan before the Ryukyu Islands of Okinawa. This tiny gem is just 90 kilometers in circumference, around 55 miles. With a population of slightly over 10,000 people, being essentially a giant granite boulder rising 2,000 meters out of the ocean, and with over 30 peaks, Yakushima is a diverse natural mix of ocean, forest, hot springs and mountains, and serves as inspiration for the film Mononoke Hime. At the break of dawn, I start my journey and headed to Kagoshima port. Veteran viewers will note that I keep forgetting to check ferry timetables, as the first available one would not be until 10 a.m. With some time on my hands, I decided to take a quick detour to Sakurajima, an active volcano in the Kagoshima Bay. Eruptions can be seen almost daily and are an iconic image of the region. No ticket is required to board this old-fashioned ferry, and it costs just 200 yen, paying when you arrive. Watching the sun rise over Sakurajima was breathtaking, but unfortunately, I didn't get to ride on the cute ferry. The volcano can be explored by car or bus, and there are many hot springs and footpaths to enjoy. I took a brief stroll through the volcanic landscape, but with the main journey ahead of us, I headed back to the port, promising to return, and headed to my boat. Jet foils are fascinating crafts and travel at high speed using a ski and water jet power that allows you to reach Yakushima in just a couple of hours. And they are actually made by Boeing, complete with uncomfortable plane seats and crying baby. Every time. The sea here is famous for flying fish, which can glide over the water for as long as 45 seconds, as documented by an NHK crew. Unfortunately, I lack the skill to get here on film, but with the magic of editing, you can see them here. Yahoo! Ha -ha! Arriving in Anbo port, I picked up a bike and rode across the island to my campsite by the Sukasaki tide pools, just down the road from the beautiful little town of Kurio. It's so much easier using a proper bike rather than, say, the Mama Chari that I was riding in the Shiminami Kaido. But it's beautiful, but I gotta get back to going to the beach, hopefully you can find some turtles. The ride around the island took longer than expected, as I kept having to stop at the numerous waterfalls, some of the best in Japan due to the island's rocky elevation. And in fact, I began to panic at the thought I would run out of batteries before I would even reach my campsite. A couple tips for your trip. Pick up a three or four day bus pass for about 3,000 yen. Usually buses in Japan are quite cheap, but this isn't the case in Yakushima, and I was surprised to learn that a ride from one side of the island to the other can cost as much as 1,500 yen alone. So just by using the bus twice, it can be worth it. And they are also great for access in the beaches, hikes and waterfalls, as well as the shops, which close at about 5pm. It's island time after all, so be careful, or you might not have dinner that night. After setting up my tent, I went down to the beach to search for turtles. While I found some evidence they were in the area, I was unable to see any that day. That's where the shell is dragging sand across, and then it's got those paddle, um, little holes in the ground, what are they called, footprints essentially. Yeah, footprints. Nice vocabulary, my man. I did come across a few other reptiles, however. I'm looking for somewhere to eat my lunch, but I just keep running into snakes. Uh, I know a little bit about Japanese snakes, and I'm pretty sure this one's harmless. But, oh, there he goes. The next morning, I rose early to get the bus to the start of the Arakawa Trailhead at 5 a.m. The trails can only be accessed by bus or special taxi, as they are a protected heritage site. Make sure to plan ahead, as there are just two buses available to start each morning. Hiking is one of the biggest tourism draws to the island. Starting the trek at dawn, you'll first follow an old logging rail into the forest, over rivers, through caves, and vistas of Yakushima's valleys. So right now I'm on the Jomonsugi hike. It takes about eight hours there and back, but it's definitely worth it if you have spending time in Yakushima. The Jomonsugi uh, tree is the big draw for this hike. It is over a thousand years old and is the largest and probably the oldest uh, remaining tree in Japan. A lot of the forest here had been cut down and they have what they've called second and third generation trees where the giant stumps of these Japanese cedars or sugis uh, will regrow out of the stump and it's like a multi-tiered tree. It's really fascinating. And you can see a lot of them here and some of the stumps are even so large that they have a shrine inside one. You can walk inside it and it's like it's walking into something like from Lord of the Rings, like a hobbit hole basically. 
and there's actually just so much mystical, like, inspiring things in this forest. I've never really seen anything quite like it. And it really doesn't shock me that this area was the inspiration for the Mononoke Hime film. The moss on the rocks, the wild trees, you can even see faces in, in trees that have fallen over. And it's like, it's a very magical part of Japan and I'm very happy that I got to experience it. Uh, but this is just a quick breakdown by this beautiful river. It's time to get back to the hike. It is going to take another four hours, so I better get to it. Be sure to pack a lunch and plenty of water, and some bug spray might help as well. Damn horseflies. We killed it. I'll teach it, stupid idiot. Oh, nice vocabulary, bro. Jesus, that thing was big. Approximately two hours after starting, you'll reach the end of the line and are rewarded with this bathroom. Actually, as far as bathrooms go, it's quite a nice one. And it will be the last chance to go without having to carry out what you brought in. So keep note of that. Then the real hike begins. To reach Jomonsugi, it'll take another two hours through the depths of the forest, climbing over the twisted roots and mossy rocks. It is easy to see how this forest inspired the film. Great sugi trees were felled in the past, but the quality of the sap in the wood preserves the trunks, and it's what allows the new trees to grow from the remains and form those second generation cedars. But here's one that did not, though it's been preserved for over 300 years. It is large enough to be a small house and can easily fit at least 10 people. It even has a small shrine and stream running through it. If you look up while inside, you'll also be greeted with the very heart of the forest. Further along the trail, there were some more interesting trees as well. I noticed other hikers were stopping to inspect, photograph, and laugh at. Couldn't tell you why though. At first I thought this would be a bit floppy, but it was in fact very stiff. Hm, must be some kind of hardwood. Continuing the trail, it's not much further to the Jomonsugi, so called because it dates back to the Jomon period, Japanese prehistory. You may have noticed that I keep saying it's 1000, 2000, or even 7000 years old, and I know what you're thinking. That does seem like a pretty vague range. I thought you could age a tree by counting the rings, but I could be mistaken. Hey Sasaki, how old is that uh, Yakasuki tree? Um, uh, well, what well, is at least 2,000? At least 2,000? Uh, maybe seven. After the hike, you'll probably be in need of a hot bath, and Yakushima has something you might not find anywhere else in modern Japan. Geothermal activity of the island creates many hot springs. While that's not uncommon in Japan, there is something that makes this one very special. This Rotemboro Onsen is a natural part of the ocean. <laughs> at high tide, it is completely underwater, and at low tide, it is boiling hot. But when the tide is just right, you can relax as the surf rolls over the rocks as you watch the sunset on the horizon. This is also one of the last shared onsens between men and women in Japan. If you can get past the initial awkwardness, it's a memorable experience. The next day, I set out to explore the coral reefs and tide pools, searching again for sea turtles, which are a favorite of mine. Every year, thousands of loggerhead and green sea turtles return to Yakushima, and it is the largest nesting ground in the Northern Hemisphere. A few years ago, while in Yakushima with friends, we spent the day at the beach. Just after arriving, hundreds of baby sea turtles started emerging from the sand. Unfortunately, I couldn't find any this day, as I left to watch the sunset over the Yoko Falls. Yakushima holds some of Japan's best waterfalls. Since the island is small, you can visit many of them in a single day, such as the spectacular Senpiro Notaki. But the Oko Notaki was my favorite, as it is the perfect side of the island to catch the setting sun, and its remoteness allowed me to experience the sound of the cascading water without interruption. A beautiful summer day, touched with the brief sad thought that I only had one day left on the island and had yet to find any turtles, I was beginning to lose hope. Visitors to Yakushima in August can witness some of the most beautifully clear skies, free from light pollution, with clear views of the Milky Way. And this time is also the period of the Perseid meteor shower, with over 100 shooting stars an hour. As I went out with my guide to take a star lapse, we heard a peculiar sound, the sound of coral and shells rubbing together on the beach. Hermit crabs are not uncommon on the island and move around at night, so we avoided using any lights, as this would ruin the photos. But it just became louder and louder, until it was all around us. We briefly illuminated our lights, then quickly extinguished them. We were surrounded by hatching sea turtles. This is a critical time in their life cycle, so seeking not to disturb them, we left as carefully as possible. The next morning, I returned to see if they were still hatching. 
but there were none. They had all made it to the sea, disappointed that I couldn't see them, but happy that they were safely in the ocean. I had to return to pack up my tent, as I had to be back at the port by noon, not to miss my ferry. It was a great trip so far, and yet I felt that something was missing, and as I walked off the shores of Curio, I decided to try one last time, taking to the sky to search the ocean. And then I saw it. Even with the delays, I was able to catch my ferry on time, perhaps a first for the channel, and I picked up this flying fish ramen to try cooking at home in a future video. With the sun setting over our island adventure, I thought about just how diverse and magnificent the nature of Yakushima is. Truly a hidden paradise in Japan. Also, as a brief note, I just want to include how friendly the local people of Yakushima were. It was a hot summer and many people would stop and offer me a ride, which is a first for me in Japan. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you too are a fan of Big Wood, like I am, let me know in the comments. And coming up on an arc adventure, I get crabs. Continuing the trail, it's not much further to the Jomonsugi, so called because it bakes, because it bakes back.